Before we begin, I'd just like to give you a quick heads up. This is going to be a very number heavy video, but I'll leave a timestamp somewhere at the bottom of the screen with a time code for you to skip ahead and just get straight to the answers. But today we're going to be looking at every single Lego Star Wars set currently available and seeing if we can put my maths degree to use for Lego once again. If you haven't seen my minifigure scale video, that was a very fun video and this is on the same level as that. But what we're trying to find out is if there is a either constant scale or at least a pattern to the scale that Lego use for their Lego Star Wars sets. Now, we haven't used all of these sets because, well, it just isn't possible with the data we've got around either the Lego sets themselves or the in-universe builds for Star Wars. First off, I have excluded all of the brick heads, the buildable droids, dioramas, midi scale ships, mechs, helmets, and all of the buildings like the Yavin Temple. Because they are held to separate parameters, the brick heads are all meant to be the same ish size. The midi scale ships, for instance, are all sized to a size that Lego want, much like some of the D2C sets that have a price point to me or a piece count that they have to keep. Rather than trying to make the sets purely in Lego form, any scale they see fit. And there are some ships that Lego do not give the dimensions of on their website. I'll get to the specific ones as we go through them because most of them do have a ship that is given. There are also some ships or vehicles or droids or weapons. Lego Star Wars really have a bit of everything available in Lego right now, but some of them do not have actual sizes we can compare to in the Star Wars universe. In fact, looking at my screen, I think it's only five of them don't. So we are dealing with quite a big size of these sets, excluding all of the ones I've already mentioned. And throughout this video, you will see numbers and graphs flashing up on your screen. I'm actually just going to record myself. I am very dark. I am actually just going to be recording myself and flashing it all up later because I think it would be a lot easier than taking a look at the same screen I am, which I'll flash up for you very quickly, but I'll break down the numbers a bit easier. Starting off with the actual sizes of Lego ships. Well, we do have quite a few different ships, vehicles, droids, weapons, as I've mentioned, and I've got all of these numbers from lego.com and actually use centimeters over inches because I'm in the UK and it's just a much, much easier value to use no matter what you are trying to do. I mean, with inches, you've got a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch. The decimal system is just so, so easy, especially when you're dealing with bigger numbers like the size of a Star Destroyer, which compared to a Lego model, which compared to a Lego model, which compared to a Lego model is absolutely massive. But the ships that we're going to be using today are Yoda Starfighter, Kenobi's Delta, the Fang Fighter, which doesn't have sizes for the Interceptor and as I don't own the set, I've been unable to measure them myself. Boba's Micro, Mando's N1 Starfighter, the UCS Razorcrest, Mando's Micro, UCS 8080, the Snub Fighter, the Firehawk from Young Jedi Adventures, Rex's Micro, the UCS Interceptor, the Star Destroyer playset, which hasn't even come out yet, but the sizes are on the specifications tab on the LEGO website, so I thought, why not include that in our experiment? We've also got the Bark Speeder from Grogu's Escape. Some of these have extra side builds, but LEGO's website is actually really good on giving you the sizes of the vehicles in the sets, much like the Crimson Firehawk you heard me say earlier. It's really nice that LEGO give us the sizes for the ships rather than add in a lamp, for instance, onto it, or even just given the size of the box which aren't really helpful when you want to display some of your models. We also have the Sith Infiltrator, the Tridroid, which LEGO have decided to give us rather than the Bark Speeder, the STAP. I guess it's the biggest part of the set, so that also makes sense. The UCS Venator, the Ghost, the AV-7 Turret, also known as the 501st Specialist Pack, the ATTE, the Swamp Speeder, which is from the 332nd Ahsoka Clone Trooper Battle Pack, the Clone Gunship or the Coruscant Guard Gunship, the TIE Bomber, the T-6 Jedi Shuttle, which was probably the most difficult to deal with out of these, you'll find that out later. The UCS Falcon, the Spider Tank, the UCS Land Speeder, the Falcon Playset, the UCS X-Wing, and finally the E-Wing. We do not have measurements for Shinhati Starfighter, but that is the lot. So there is a load, a load of sets here, and that means we've got a load of numbers. I've taken the height, length and width, as I've said, but also had to try and find the height, length and width of the actual in-universe model. Now, 
for the most part, that has been impossible. Now, I did manage to get most of the lengths, but even the heights and widths for common ships such as the Falcon or the Land Speeder just simply don't exist on Wikipedia. All these measurements have been taken from Wikipedia, which is more of a fan Wikipedia, as some of the information on Wikipedia I do find to be inaccurate at times. And something like the Millennium Falcon length, for instance, 34.75 meters was actually misrecorded as 34.52 meters in the Force Awakens dictionary. Perhaps they've lost a few parts and a bit of the Falcon has been chipped off, but that is a quarter of a meter that might be important later on. So I have gone with Wikipedia. In fact, I checked the sources and most of these are actually taken from the official data bank on starwars.com, which is really nice because I'd assume the website is a little more updated than the visual dictionaries. And I also know how some people feel about some of the information put into the visual dictionaries they're not necessarily perfect measurements. But what was I gonna do with this information? Well, as I said, most of the lengths are present besides five of the models. The five missing are the Snub Fighter from The Mandalorian, the pirate ship, the Crimson Firehawk from Young Jedi Adventures, the Tridroid from the Battle Pack. Although there are rough estimates to just how tall this is, the bigger version doesn't actually have any measurements and I very much doubt Lego were trying to oversize the smaller version. So I have included that from the experiment. Also the AV7 turret, it does have a height which Wikipedia has actually misrecorded as the length of the turret. It isn't, it is indeed the height and you can read that later on in the article on the same page. And also the spider tank which it's very new from the Mandalorian, so it makes sense that that doesn't yet have any measurement. So they are the five that I am going to be excluding from this data set. And honestly, I don't think it would play too much of a role later on because I feel like these end up falling into the same pattern as all the other sets anyway. Now, the first thing to do was find the Lego length, which is in centimetres compared to the Star Wars length, which although they were on the website in meters, they were seeming to keep accurate to two decimal places. So I ended up converting all of these to centimeters anyway. And if you do want to convert between your measurements, check out my mini figure scale video, and that will help convert either meters to centimeters or inches to meters. And then you can once again convert your meters into centimeters or simply just times by 100. But here I actually got the spreadsheet to do most of the work and had already set up parameters for it to divide the Lego dimensions by the actual in-universe dimensions. As I said, the height and the width was sort of pointless, so I probably would have been better just to set up the one at this stage. But I did get all of them a big mess of numbers and ended up rounding these to the nearest whole number just to make it look much easier. Now, though they were rounded to the nearest whole number on my screen, I was still using the decimal places to calculate the scale. And all I did was divide one by this number and I got the scale in a one to X ratio. And once again, I've simplified this to full numbers just so it looks a bit nicer on screen. And now we had the specific Lego scales for each of the ships. Most of them were in the 20s, 30s, 40s, which personally, is the best area for minifigure scales. And it was very clear that a lot of the scales that were off and were either a bit bigger or a lot, lot smaller were the Microfighter play sets and the UCS sets. I think the UCS tie was something like one to 20 scale, which is a little over double my minifigure scale version. But when you take a look at the graph, you notice most of them are bunched up in the bottom left and they're actual two outliers. I suppose they're not exactly outliers, but just two sets that were way too big to help us see the pattern in this data. That was the Star Destroyer play set, which I'm afraid I did end up dropping. And that is the new set that hasn't quite come out yet, but we can expect it 1st of August. And that was 1,600 meters. That was why it was all the way over there. The scale of the Star Destroyer is actually 1 to 3,478. This is the ship that I will be building in minifigure scale when we hit 100k subs. So I'm going to have to build that nearly 3,500 times bigger than the playset. I would already struggle to fit the playset scale version somewhere in this room. There's no chance of me fitting a minifigure scale version. So make sure you are subscribed before we go on with the video to help us hit that target. Now, the other set that I did end up dropping is the UCS Veneta. It's not as big as the Star Destroyers. The Star Destroyers were made larger in universe to be a bit more intimidating, but it is still 
1137 meters 1137 meters and is scaled 1 to 1043 which is only five times smaller than the rex microfighter so the scale of the two isn't too far off if you wanted to display the rex microfighter with the ucs venator though i'm sure no matter which one you bought if you own one of them you're probably not going to be picking up the other one. But so we could take a better look at the graph and get rid of the two dots that are much further away from the others. I got rid of these two and did the exact same progress. And this is the graph we end up with. Now, it does look a lot better than the last one, but there's still another two points. In fact, I noticed three points that were quite a bit above the line and all the other points seem to fall below. And funnily enough, the two points on the top and the one point uh, I'll point out on screen are the three microfighter sets in this data set, which was very interesting because not only were they away from the line, but they also seemed to form their own pattern as the three of them weren't exactly dotted around randomly. But we'll get to that in a second. First off, if you have studied maths at any higher level, you'll notice there is an R squared value, which long story short is just how accurate this graph is. On the last one, we actually had quite a high number of 0.88 showing that they did actually form the trend but because of the two outliers that we still had they were mixing that up and I don't think it's necessarily as accurate as it said it was but that value has now dropped to 0.214 saying that there's not really a pattern the closer that number is to one the more likely there is or the stronger the connection between all the data points so it doesn't really think there's a pattern but of course, I have to take out the microfighters and see if that helps our experiment. Now, before we take a look at the rest of the data, let's take a look at these three microfighters to the side for one second, because they all seem to be of similar sizes. All three microfighters are scaled to roughly the same size. And look at it now, it's the same issue we had with the brick heads, which is why I removed them. So it does make sense, but that does mean that there should be some sort of equation to figure out how they scale them down based on their ship size to get every ship being more or less the same. So I went on a little tangent to try and find this equation for anyone wondering, and I found that the Lego scale for Boba's microfighter was 1 to 239, for Mando's microfighter 1 to 85, and Rex's microfighter 1 to 209, is actually found by times in the ship length by 0.119, and then subtracting 43 and a half. So if you did want to find the mathematical calculation behind turning a ship into a microfighter, that is it. Though you could always just look at the size of a microfighter and try to get as close as that as possible. So with the microfighters gone, we finally have, I think the strongest data set we're gonna get. We've got a mix of UCS sets, of play sets, of smaller side builds of play sets, and builds like the battle packs which i don't consider to be fully play sets but they still fit in this data and as you can see by the table that will be on screen i'll put it up on screen here for you to see there does seem to be some sort of pattern however that value at the top of the screen if you have noticed 0.538 shows the pattern isn't exactly that strong now it's not to say there isn't a pattern there is some sort of pattern in the sense that the bigger ships are scaled down a bit more than the smaller ships. But when Lego models tend to be around the same size for play sets, and even UCS display sets only go so big, that does make a bit of sense. But as far as the actual scales used based on the size of the ship, there doesn't seem to be much correlation. And of course, you know, I really had to stretch my maths degree across here. Not only did we look for a linear correlation, we looked for an exponential one, a polynomial. We looked for a logarithmic, log, logarithmic. We looked for a logarithmic pattern and even a moving average, which is meant to just find any pattern across the data set. And there might have been some really big words here that you either haven't heard or can't remember what they mean. But don't worry because we found no pattern across any means of the testing. In fact, the only one that showed any. <coughs> In fact, the only one that showed any promise was actually the moving average. So let's take a closer look at that one. Now on the graph, you can see that it splits up the data points into roughly two lines. So I thought we'd take a look at these specific points and see if we can find any pattern. And to do that, 
I ordered the sizes of the ships with the scales based on the size low to high stretching all the way from the UCS land speeder which in universe is 3.4 meters all the way up to the ghost which is the biggest ship it's bigger than the falcon the falcon's nearly 35 meters the ghost is 43.9 meters before eight meters it said there was no pattern or 800 centimeters on the table so we are going to ignore that and confirm there is no pattern for any ships up to eight meters i think the ucs land speeder might throw them off it's one seventh of the life-size model which i think is probably the closest to life any lego model is going to get unless you see one of the giant brick built characters in your lego store but focusing between eight meters which i keep calling 800 meters 800 centimeters or eight meters and 2500 centimeters or 25 meters we do actually see a bit of a pattern now there's no pattern that we can exactly state using a fancy equation which actually as this is a lego video is probably better off than if there was because i'm sure it would just confuse most of you watching so instead of trying to find an equation which technically it did try to give us there is a much much easier way of seeing which scales lego use for their playset models now if you have watched my minifigure scale video you'll know that i recommended three different models one of which i hadn't tested at all and that was the 2 to 45 which i felt was a bit better than going smaller than a 1 to 30 model and if you did end up using that definitely let me know how you find it in the comments below but the playsets produced by lego almost perfectly fit into one of two categories before we get to the two categories i'd like to speak about the outlier because you might remember earlier i said about the t6 being a difficult set and it really really is it's a 1 to 84 scale I didn't realize how massive these T6 Jedi shuttles were, but I think it would have worked out much better as a UCS set. I don't overly like the playset. The back of the model just looks like it's been a bit neglected or forgotten about, and that might be down to piece counts rather than the designers because they've done amazing work on the front of the ship. And because of the size of it, you could only fit one minifigure in the cockpit, which they definitely could have taken a leaf from the Mandalorian Starfighter and tried to make room for two minifigures but once again i just feel like there were too many constraints on the model and perhaps there might have even been a rush to get it out in time so we are going to be ignoring that for the last part of the video because some models will not fit some larger ships that have been made smaller or vice versa smaller ships that have been made larger like the ucs type might not fit into this category but half of the remaining models in this size category actually fit between 1 to 24 and 1 to 32 scale which is around that 1 to 25 1 to 30 scale which i know loads of you actually prefer in the comments to the 145 scale i use but the other half of the lego play sets were in a 1 to 41 to 1 to 50 scale which is around that 1 to 45 so if you were to round these a bit more you will find that most of lego's models fit to either a 130 or similar scale or a 145 i think the gunship is something like 1 to 42 scale or around that mark as well so i have seen lego keep into this before and it is quite nice because it means for the most part if you are working with a 130 or 145 scale half the time you're going to have to add an extra few plates with or take a few extra plates apart with the Kenobi Delta, which is actually the smallest of the models in this size. Again, we're going with ship models that in universe are between 8 and 25 meters. As below 8, there wasn't enough data to recommend any sort of pattern. And it was very similar with ships above 25 meters, only we just didn't have enough Lego ships to accurately give us a scale. So it is really nice to see at the end of the day, Lego are keeping to a rough 130 or 145 minifigure scale which just goes to show whichever one of the two you've picked. Lego Star Wars in particular have plenty of sets for you to buy and modify and you can even then work your way up and go with the opposite scaled sets and try to modify them to your scale. Of course, if you're taking a 145 scale ship and trying to modify it to a 130 scale ship, you're definitely going to need a few more pieces than if you were taking a 130 scale and modifying it to 145 even though the number on 145 is bigger the ships are actually smaller so i'll leave a list on screen of all the ships that are 1 to 30 scale 
or thereabouts and then I'll leave a list of all these ships that are 1 to 45 scale that I'll definitely be keeping my eye out above the other ones as they are the easiest sets to modify to minifigure scale. And if you wondered what this all looks like on a graph, yeah, there's really not much of a pattern to it. So this perhaps could just be coincidental. We're only looking at about eight, nine sets in that period between eight and 25 meters. And perhaps it's all just coincidence that they match up, but it's really nice to have found a pattern in the playset scale of Star Wars sets. And hopefully this answers a few of you wondering if Lego does indeed use a scale. Personally, I was hoping to find one equation Lego used to crack the Lego scale, but it seems it is a bit more complicated to this and perhaps some of the different designers like to keep to different scale sets and have their own specialties when it comes to building Lego models. Either way, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. And if you are still watching, be sure to drop a like if you are enjoying the sets that Lego Star Wars are bringing out and subscribe to not miss out any of the modifications here on the channel as alongside reviews and all the other videos you can expect. That's all for me today and now you can go rest. Don't look at any numbers for the rest of the week. This is enough math for quite some time, but may the bricks be with you always.